probably the only member of the House who addresses the Lister, and certainly not from within the House. Fletcher Tabato. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Thank you for this opportunity to speak on behalf of New Zealand First in this, the anti-money laundering and countering financing of terrorism uh, amendment bill. I'd just like to acknowledge the contribution from the previous speaker, because it's not often I agree with the uh, Green Party, but uh, he did speak quite eloquently about the resourcing of, and in regards to the implementation of this legislation. And I do think he is uh, right in saying that. And, and I th this is an insidious crime. In fact, those were the exact words of the minister who uh, gave the uh, first contribution in this, the third reading of the bill. He described it as an insidious crime. I'd like to congratulate the minister actually on his initial contribution. It was a, a, a robust and worthy contribution on such a, a serious matter. Um, and I would also like to acknowledge uh, the Select Committee's work, which I have done so previously. Uh, it's not a committee I have sat on, but uh, I do commend them because the detail in this and the movement from where we were in terms of draft legislation and the contributions uh, from the public and industry experts uh, were uh, robust, were um, quite large. And so to get to this point, uh, now that we are finally here, is a, a, uh, I do commend uh, the work of the, um, you know, our bureaucrats and the committee members. The minister said that this crime of money laundering was in cities. He said it undermines the financial system, and in that I completely agree. What he said, though, was we already have good laws, and I would uh, disagree with the minister's contribution. We do not have good laws currently. This is kind of perhaps best described, this particular amendment bill is best described as a good step in the right direction, but it's only the second step in the right direction. He seemed to imply in his contribution that criminals now would now move into these areas to launder their money, implying, uh, Mr Speaker, that they had not been doing so already. But we have heard in this House this evening some uh, particularly pointed uh, statistics from other members on the level of crime being uh, committed. Uh, by way of money laundering and fraud within our uh, trust sector, in particular with our lawyers, uh, real estate, and a, an example from uh, Sky City, an unfortunate uh, individual case. So, to the Minister, this has been an issue, and in relation to this particular amendment bill, these areas have been a known issue of known concern for decades. And I put it to the Minister that the Reserve Bank, Treasury, the Police and indeed New Zealand First, particularly uh, with regard to Winston Peters, has been telling this government for, uh, well, ever since they came into power, that this is a huge problem and we have needed action uh, ever since the government did, in fact, uh, become, uh, the National Party did, in fact, become the government. And it has been... So it was a problem uh, nine years ago, but the way that the industry itself has been treated, this cottage trust industry has been treated uh, in New Zealand over the last nine years, the problem has um, grown, one could, I think, fairly say exponentially, Mr Speaker. So I view this bill as a, an excellent example of what should be called an indictment on the government and especially the beacon of national party politics, and I speak and refer to the former Prime Minister of New Zealand, because he in particular uh, drew up an impassioned defence for these uh, lawyers and the ongoing activities of these trusts in New Zealand. He spoke of a cottage industry returning millions to the New Zealand economy, and yet we have to put this into scope and what was the balance of this supposed good cottage industry in New Zealand. And I think, uh, as previous members have noted, uh, the police uh, investigation team into Ford 
did give us some particularly useful numbers, Mr Speaker. Uh, just last year, they tried to summarise the problem for us, and they came up with a figure of $1.6 billion. Now, I, I say to the members opposite, that is $1.6 billion of money being uh, currently laundered in New Zealand for illegal gain, uh, whether that be through uh, by uh, drug cartels, for example, is a common uh, example, and it is not an unfair example to give. We are talking about international drug cartels using New Zealand to launder money to the tune of $1.6 billion per annum, Mr Speaker. We are talking about the facilitation of financial support of terrorism. That was used as an example, and a link was made, sir, within the Panama Papers to terrorism and the laundering of money in New Zealand. And it is an indictment, sir, on this government that it has taken nine years to get to this point. The Honourable Todd McClay said to the House in 2009, there is money laundering in New Zealand, and it comes from the illegal drug trade, and it is too much, and we must do much more about this. He finished his contribution to the House by saying, the sooner those who use New Zealand as a place where they may be able to launder their illegally gained funds will realise that we are taking this issue seriously, the sooner they will stop. The words of a National Party MP, a National MP at the time in 2009. It is not unfair, it is not unreasonable to say that for nearly nine years this government has sat back and done nothing. And it is an appropriate example of a government that says one thing and through their inaction does the complete opposite. Sir, they, the words I described from Minister Bennett as being eloquent words, they were true. But I say to him they were hollow words because of the uh, time it has taken to get here. This government has done nothing until the pressure came on, and boy, was there a lot of pressure from the Panama Papers, Mr Speaker. The pressure truly was put on. And now, now we have a government that has acted, and I have spoken um, uh, in argument of the government's actions, but to be fair, we are here, and this is good legislation, actually. It is a good second step in the combating of money laundering and uh, the financing of terrorism. <coughs> so, I think, I think I might uh, end my contribution there because uh, it would please Mr Naylor um, to no end, but because it is important that the public of New Zealand know and that this House record that New Zealand First does support the legislation, it will achieve what it has to do. And actually, I do have to acknowledge Mr Young, perhaps, uh, in uh, ending uh, my contribution, because he did speak well about the cost burdens to New Zealand business. And we do have to give cognizance to the obligations that this legislation puts on New Zealand business and their operations. And I do agree, which again is unusual, uh, with the member. Uh, the Select Committee did do a lot of work. There was a lot of consultation. And we've finally got here. It will cost businesses more to comply but the New Zealand public, is, they, it is fair that they expect New Zealand will not allow the facilitation of money laundering and the financing of terrorism through the New Zealand economy and these industries. So uh, we have arrived at the right place. My point is it's taken way too long, and I hope the members accept that. But we absolutely uh, support this legislation, Mr Speaker. Thank you. <coughs> Ian McKelvey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, that was quite long, that speech. It gives me a great.